everybody, it's Sam. And before this little piece goes to the collector who's purchased it on Nantucket, I wanted to take a minute to share with you a little bit about my process as a weaver and how it might be quite unique or different from other things that you've seen or things that you understand about weaving. So this piece has a highlight here, which is this little bit of green seaweed, bright green seaweed, in fact. And the bright green seaweed is a pretty symbolic part of this piece because when I began weaving, I didn't know what I was gonna weave. Well, you say, isn't that different than tapestry weaving? Most tapestry weaving, not only do you know, but it's almost a little bit like paint by number. You might even have behind your loom, your tapestry loom, a picture. You know, green here, red, blue here, so on and so forth. And it's leading and guiding you. Some weavers are also painters and they might have a painting that they've done or a drawing that they've done. Some weavers are mathematicians and they might have a very exact pattern that they are following to create their piece. I am not any of those kinds of weavers. I am a weaver who relies on sacred listening and intuition to create very improvisational, spontaneous pieces. I am inspired by the Saori style of weaving. If you don't know about it, I would send you over to Saori Global, S-A-O-R-I. It is a very powerful philosophy, not just for weaving, but for life. So at any rate, back to the beginning of the story, which is to say, I didn't know what I was going to weave. And I headed out after I just sort of begun the piece right down here, not knowing, and I went kayaking with one of my kiddos while I was on Nantucket Island, which is the island I grew up on. We moved to Nantucket when I was nine years old. And off I went with my son, we were kayaking in low tide. And everything was pretty gray, actually. The ocean didn't really look, uh, you know, azure or blue. Everything looked sort of bland, blah. And then all of a sudden, while I was looking down, I saw this wonderful bit of bright green seaweed. Really, like that, bright and green, you know, powerful, pow. And so when I came home, I knew what I wanted to weave, which isn't to say I knew I was weaving this. Because again, it's not a picture in the mind that we're trying to fulfill. It's a practice of listening, engaging intuition in the present tense. Now, there's something very powerful about that. When you are living your life, you're not living it simultaneously in the present, in the past, and in the future. You're living it in the present. And that is the form of weaving that I practice. It's very present-minded. So even if I had a sense of like, oh, I want blues and greens, I wouldn't have an image of my mind that I would be fulfilling. Because if I did, I wouldn't be in the practice of listening. So that wonderful bit of bright green seaweed to me is symbolic of that listening. I didn't know what I was going to weave. Out I go, mind is open, paying attention, having a wonderful kayak. I see that green seaweed and I knew this is it. This is the Nantucket Creeks at low tide. So it's a wonderful practice for everybody, whoever you are, artist, painter, baker, cook, pianist, whatever it is, person who's just living on planet Earth, to practice that sacred listening. It brings us to the present and also fulfills what we need in the present. What's the answer? What's the next step? Hmm, I think it's gonna be some bright green seaweed. Don't forget to visit my weaving shop and see what else I have that's sprung up from this practice of intuitive weaving.